guys, Tina Gale here, and I am here to show you how to decorate the home decor pieces that are available in the scrap room right now. So if you missed the reveal video, I'll have it linked at the very end so you can back up and check it out and everything that you get within the kit. So these are some bonus kits available from the scrap room. But today I thought I would just show you some tips, what supplies you're going to need, and then we're going to go ahead and create the home and the gnome piece today. So I hope you'll enjoy this and come along with me. So first, some of the basic supplies. If you purchase the kit from the scrap room, then it's going to come with paint so that you can use the paint in the kit. So you're just going to need some brushes. And depending on what you're working on, you could use a foam brush just any old little brush or a big flat brush. I pulled out this one to do with the letters. The wood pieces come pre-sanded, so there's nothing you need to prep them, but once you do your papers, you are gonna need some, some type of sanders. So some different things that um, are good, if you have the little file sanders, regular sandpaper that you can get at any kind of department store or um, home goods store or a sanding block. This one I've had for a long time. I actually think this is an automotive sanding block. I'm not sure, but you can tell I have worn that sucker out. Um, any type of file. The Foundations Decor has um, nail files that are needle files that are available. So this is um, the set and it comes with three different sizes. So there's a larger circular one, a small circle, and then one that's kind of like a knife. And these are really great when you get into these small little areas like this to kind of sand and get the paper off. And you'll see what I mean when we get to that. Also, when you get to the letters and to the inside, it's really hard to get with a block or anything. You can get it with sandpaper, but it's, it really gets to wearing on your hands and it, it makes it really sore. So these I have found are really, really great. I, I love these. Also, if you have a husband that has any type of tools, you may talk to him. Because when I first started working with the wood pieces, I was telling my husband, it's like my hands are just torn up from using the sandpaper. I need some kind of file. So this is the same thing as what this is. So you may even be able to go to an automotive store or um, lumber yard, something like that, Lowe's, Home Depot's maybe, and ask them for a sanding file. And that's what they are. It's the same thing. It's just not pretty and turquoise and finished at the end. Um, but from here to about right there is all the file part. So this works great. And this is what I started with. Um, but then I did eventually get theirs. So, And you'll also need a pair of scissors. If you're painting, you want to get some water out along with your paint and protect your work surface. You can use anything to put your paint out. If you have something like this, you can put paint directly onto it. You can get a styrofoam plate, a plastic lid, anything. For the glue, when we put them down, the things, the two that I have found that work best is Mod Podge. You can't beat it. You want something that's going to adhere really well and strong so your pieces aren't coming up, but you want it to not be a real quick drying glue because you want to be able to move it around a little bit. So you want semi-quick, but not put it down and it's stuck. So Mod Podge is great. I love the one that's for paper, and I also like the matte finish, so that's up to you. And with this, when you finish putting your paper on, I like to go back and put this over the top of my pieces and it seals it off. So if it's out for a long time, then it helps protect it from dust and different things like that so that you can wipe and clean better. So you can imagine if this is paper on top and you go to try to clean it, um, it, it could get damaged, it could get dirty or anything like that. So that's another reason why I love Mod Podge. If you have the Tombow liquid glue or anything comparable to a liquid glue that has a little bit of open time so that it doesn't set up immediately, then this works really well too. So you could even use this to glue your paper on and go ahead and give it a finish with Mod Podge if you want, 
or there's lots of spray finishes that you can get now and you could just shoot it with some type of spray protective if you're um, like me and kind of want to protect it just a little bit more. So we're going to start with the home piece and this video may be a little bit longer um, but just work along with me or you can fast forward if you just want a quick overview. Just work with it any way you want. So this is the home. Like I said, it already comes pre-sanded. You don't have to do anything to prep these. On the example, they painted theirs an off-white. And of course, you can do anything that you want. If there's a particular color that you like in your home, then pick that color, grab some paint or something like that, um, or use the white paint that's in the kit that you purchased. I'm going to do a little bit of both. I have some stain that I've used on my other pieces if you watched the first video. Um, so I'm going to stain the edges and I'm going to paint the tops. And I'm going to paint the tops just kind of an off white. So I'm just going to start on that and I will just fast forward here. Um, you don't need to watch paint dry. But you can use any type of paint on these pieces that you want. You can use any of the acrylic paint found in the home decor section. I am just going to go on really quick and a couple of tips if you're interested. You don't have to be neat and picky or anything like that. But if you do very much of this and, and you're interested, some great tips to save your paint brushes to make your pieces look nice and professional is to not glob your paint on your brush. It breaks the bristles down. It'll wear your brushes out. So you can tell this goes really fast. I am just going to slap some paint on here. I'm probably going to do one coat and then come back and I might do a second coat. I don't know. This is covering pretty well. I might not do a second coat. Then I will stain the edges. When I stain the edges, it's going to be the same way as this. So then I will get that done and I will come back and show you how to finish the home off. Through the magic of video, I am now done. I have it all painted on the front. I've stained the sides and the back. If you're going to stain and paint, I would recommend that you stain first and then paint. And you can see that some of it's kind of messy because where I laid it down and my mat had stain or whatever it's on there. If you don't like the distressed look, then you can simply go back with your paintbrush, kind of go over that with your paint and clean it all up. It will be fine. I intentionally didn't worry too much about being messy. And the great thing about these projects is you can really just tailor it to your style. So if you like the clean, crisp look and you want them completely painted, no distressing or anything like that, no stain, then you can do that. If you're more into the country farmhouse look like I am and you like it kind of antiqued and roughed up, then you just don't have to worry about being neat. The other thing that I like to do if you're kind of like in the middle and you like a little bit of rustic but you don't want this up here then go ahead and clean that up with some paint um, but i like to go back with a piece of sandpaper and sand the edges to where you're exposing the wood so that's one reason why i recommend staining first and then painting because then the stain's going to be underneath it and what you're doing is simply removing the paint off the top of the stain so that's the only other tip that I have for you, some different ideas for different finishes. But like I said, I'm going to sand and kind of rough those up a little bit, have the stain come through. See on that, I even have paint on the edge, and I am fine with that. I have a really rustic looking decor in my home, so it's perfect. The other thing that I will probably do once I sand it, I will go back with some of my stain with just a little bit of water and just kind of go around the outside edges. So when this project's completely done and I have that the way that I like it, I will update you and show you what the finished product looks like on mine. Now for the gnome. So we have this. We have all of our papers, and then of course you're going to need your glue. And I went ahead, while I had the stain, I went ahead and stained the edges of him in the back. I left all of this up here. I don't do anything to the edges of the thin wood because it's got a dark brown finish anyways from kind of the burning when it cuts. But what I would recommend when you start these is you get a pencil, and before you take this apart, you're going to put an X 
on the front of all these different pieces. And you'll see why in a moment. But you want to make sure all of those are marked. And then you can take these off. So go ahead and pop them all off. Set them aside. And then we'll take care of all of the foam pieces off of the base. Now that you have all the pieces off and all of the foam dots peeled off and thrown away, you want to go through your papers and pick which ones that you want to use on your little gnome. And there are a lot of different possibilities. I love the little pink sweater look and that would be perfect for his little outfit or even his stocking cap. But I think what I have decided, I want to go with a little bit more of the blue and the pink with touches of the red. So I think I've narrowed it down to these five patterned papers that I'm going to use. So I'm going to set these aside. And you could have a little army of gnomes and just do them in all different colors. And I have some great ideas coming up towards the end and hopefully ways to show you more ways to decorate your gnome. Okay, so what you're going to do, the reason that you need the X's on these, this is the front that's going to go on the gnome. And you don't want to, you could put it like this and draw around, but then you're going to have to deal with pencil marks and everything. So you want to match the X to the back side of the paper. Now on this one, I'm going to play just a little bit because this is his little shoes and I thought it might be kind of fun just to have the little wood look. So I want to kind of see if I do it down here, I'm going to have light and dark with a stripe, and it's going to look a little odd. So I think I want these two colors down here. I could do it in here. That's pretty similar. In fact, I may do that. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and trace on the front because I want it very specific on the pattern. But I want to make a really wide mark, so I'm going to tilt my pencil where it's off a little bit. And you're going to cut on the outside of the pencil line so that you have plenty to take away and to play with. So you're just going to trace your pieces. Okay, so this was a bad one to start with because I wanted to do from the front. So let me get this and then I'll show you on the others. Okay, so that's my little feet. I believe I want the hat in this. So you're going to flip it over. You want the X to the back side of the paper. Okay, so then when you glue it on, the paper's glued to the side with the X. And you don't have pencil marks that you have to deal with when you're cutting it out and gluing. So you're just going to go through and trace all of these paces, pieces onto your paper. I have something fun planned for the beard. So his mittens, let's see. Well, let's do this. I think I want his outfit from this um, red and white gingham. So I'm going to flip it over to the back. This one doesn't have an X, but this is my front. So I'm going to flip him over. And I am just going to trace around all of him because not much of his little outfit shows. But I want to make sure that something's behind all of the little pieces that's going to be glued on top. So I'm just going to cover this whole little gnome with his outfit color. And then I think I want the little cuffs to his mittens with the red. So I'm going to put the X against the back side of the paper. Trace that. This is what I said, you just, these 6x6 six six paper pads are perfect because you get so many different patterns to create with, but you're just using little bitty pieces. And then for his mittens, I think I'm going to do the holly berry. So I'm going to flip it over, put the X against the back side of the paper again. Alright, so then when you're cutting, you don't want to cut right on your pencil line. You want to cut just outside of it. And we're going to clean up all of those edges after they're glued onto the wood. So go ahead and cut all of your pattern papers out. And we will be back to start putting it together. Once you have all of your pieces of paper cut out, then go ahead and lay them on top of the wood. And I've already glued some of these. 
but we'll glue this one and I'm going to go ahead and use my Tombow mono liquid glue because this one works really well it stays wet enough that I can kind of move it but dries fairly quick so you don't want it real sopping because then it will just squish out and it will also kind of buckle your paper but just enough that you know you can get it and when I put it on I just kind of roll it around and then that kind of spreads that glue so you can see this is why you want a glue that you have just a little bit of time to work with you can also flip it over and just make sure that you're kind of within all of the boundaries of the paper and then you're going to want to let that dry okay and then we're going to go ahead and do the background too but i wanted to show you one thing that i decided to do in the picture that you have you'll see they painted the feet in these green they painted the face and the little nose pink so you can absolutely do that that little pink crocheted paper that I thought was so cute I decided to put that on for the nose um, I love pattern paper so the more pattern paper I can use then I want to so that's another preference up to you if you want to paint these pieces or just go wild and go with a lot of um, patterned paper so I wanted to show you on this I drew it so that the whole thing would be have some pattern paper behind it because there's these little pieces especially on the hands here you know there's just tiny bits peeking of his clothes so that's going to be his arm and I want to make sure that that's on there but I wanted to show you on the face when you put the nose in and then the hat you have just a little bit showing so you can handle this a couple of different ways I'm gonna just take paint and just paint right through here so kind of where I know it's gonna go underneath the hat so just pretty much a brush stroke across I'm gonna put some paint there so that will be his face the other thing that I've decided to go ahead and do just to save me some sanding because these pieces down here his feet is going to cover up oops upside down is going to cover up most of that I'm gonna go ahead and trim right here and I'm gonna trim just a little bit off his mittens so this is a personal choice but I just know that's gonna take a little bit of time to sand and it's gonna get covered up and I may be able to take even more than that off but I, I don't want a gap so just gonna trim a little bit and I thought about doing his hat as well so that I don't have to sand up here so what I'm gonna do to make sure I'm pretty sure all of the wood matched up really well but let's make sure I'm not gonna have oh yeah the hats perfect so I'm not gonna have to worry about that so somewhere about on that knot so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that piece off as well I will just save time on the sanding and like I said you don't have to do that but I think it will save some time so let's glue this piece on so since I've kind of cut him away this one I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little on the paper I really think it works better when you put it on the wood because the paper can soak it up the wood can soak it up and you want to make sure that you have plenty so that it's not going anywhere and if there's glue outside of where this paper it's not going to hurt anything so I'm going to go ahead and glue him down you can also use a brayer which is just kind of a, a it's either a rubber or a wood roller like a rolling pin and I do do that when I make these I just forgot and didn't bring one over here to this work surface but that really gets all the air bubbles out and make sure that's down and flat so here is a brayer went ahead and decided to grab it because I want to make sure these last for a really long time so I just give it a really good hard press roll that on there okay and again the only thing I didn't do was the beard so you can paint this in the picture you can see they just painted their beard white 
you could pick some patterned paper. I almost think it would kind of be fun to do the little Christmas trees that are in the black with the white, and you can do them upside down or that way. Um, I have another little idea, so we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, so once you have them glued on, you want to let them go and dry. And I've already done this to some of them. So after they've dried, you can see we have pattern paper around. And this is kind of better if you get some smaller, like your Kirby scissors, but I don't have those over here either. Um, but just trim away, and a lot of times you can get it completely trimmed and you don't have to do any sanding. But you want to make sure that your pieces are good and dry. Okay, so when you have your pieces, they're dry. You definitely don't want to sand until it's dry because it will gum up your sandpaper. It's liable to tear your paper. So make sure they're, they're really good and dry. I would give it several hours. But then you just want to hit on the paper and just go down, kind of at an angle. And you're just getting the little bit of extra overhang off the paper. So this is another design choice too. Do you want it distressed a little bit where maybe the paper is gone from the edges? Or do you want it really nice, crisp, and clean? You don't want any antiquing or distressing? Then just real lightly do that. And this one's very easy because like I said, if you have those little small tip scissors, you can pretty much get everything trimmed away with those. Um, I like a little bit of distress, so like on these, on the shoes, I'm going to tear it away where I have a little bit of white on the edge. You can also go back once you have them sanded and get a little um, like a chalk ink or a distress ink and just kind of hit the edges and distress those where you give it a little bit of inking around the edges. So just go through and sand all your pieces and then we're going to come back and do the fun part. So I have everything filed off. I went ahead and just painted over the top there of his face and I'm ready to put all of this together. And I wanted to show you, I went ahead and did the beard in the tree print paper. I think it is so cute. So that is definitely another option you could do. You could either paint it with your paint that comes with the kit or pick one of your patterned papers. But I thought the little tree was a perfect little touch for a gnome. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just using my Tombow Mono Liquid Glue and just gonna put all of these pieces together. You can put something heavy on top of these while it dries like an acrylic block or a book. Any, anything that you have that's kind of heavy, that will help it all stay together really strong and last for a long time. You can see it worked out really well to just go ahead and cut some of those pieces off of his little shirt so I didn't have to worry about sanding. You can also tell by the looks of my hand this is not a manicure friendly project so just be prepared for that and get messy. But I hope you can see that you definitely can do as little as you want like they did just painting and a few pieces of pattern paper or really go all out and add more and we are not done so I hope you stay till the very end to see all the other little extras that you can do. You can just keep going and going and going. Okay so his little nose. I also went back with my little chalk ink. Where did it go? And I just rubbed around the edges on his little nose. I rubbed it towards the bottom, so a little shadow on the bottom of his nose. It just makes them that much more dimensional and detailed. Now I'm not going to glue this on, but I want you to see how he looks. Line all of this up. So this is another reason why you want that glue that stays wet for a little bit. So when you're putting all of these pieces together, you can sit and adjust it just how you like it. And you can see there's just a little bit of his face that peeks out, so you don't need much of a paint down there. So that would be him finished, but of course we're going to do more. If you're like me, you have tons of Christmas embellishments. 
So I just kind of went through my stash, picked out some different things that I thought might be kind of fun. So I have some little candy enamel dots. So I think this would be really cute. You could put a little pom-pom on his hat. Another idea would be if you have some wood veneer, I have this one that's kind of like a star. So that could be a little tip for his hat. I also have this little sequined sticker that would look cute. Don't forget your buttons. You could put a button and twine up here if you have some little holly. These are little chipboard pieces. Then you could add that to his hat or down here. I think that would be really cute down here like on the brim of his hat. This was another little chipboard embellishment that I have. And one of the ideas that I have is to kind of just build a little scene Put some things in his hand. You could find some little small magnets and put a magnet on his hand and then a magnet on different pieces of embellishments. Um, I couldn't find my magnets, but I have little bitty Velcro dots. So you can find those in the sewing section as well. So you can just stick a little Velcro dot here. I'm not sure, let's put this one. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this one on his hand. Now you for sure want to let those set up before you start picking stuff on and off because it will pull off. But you can see, you can just put a little shape in his hand. There's brads, there's wood stars, so you can add that somewhere to his hat. Brads, you can just break the backs off of them. And you could use one of these for the tip of his hat. So many different ideas. So just go through your stash and see what you have. I also have this, this is from Paper House and it's just a little, it's one of the bobby pins so it's a page deal. But I think if you popped that off, I think that would be adorable too. So I think I'm definitely gonna do that. So see how easy that comes off. Just pull the glue. So I think I'm gonna add him. When you're thinking about things that can go in his hand, also remember wood veneer. I have this cute little bear that I think would be adorable in his hand. I also think it'd be fun to do an everyday gnome. So I'm gonna get another one and I may, I'll at least share the photo, um, but I'm gonna do another one that's kind of everyday colors and clothes because you could change him out seasonally. You could have a little apple for fall or back to school, a camera, I have a butterfly that you could do for springtime. And I have this little heart that you could put on for Valentine's Day. So you can have so much fun with this little gnome. So I know you're going to want to pick up more than one when you go shopping. So some last little tips for you. I went ahead and adhered this little holly berry and leaves right up here on the kind of the crook of the brim of his hat. This I went ahead and did with the button, and then I used the enamel shape inside the center of it. It fit perfect, so I thought that was a perfect little embellishment. Then for their hands, you can find little tiny magnets, or I had Velcro dots. So I've put a couple of little Velcro dots here, and you can tell if I take something out of their hands, you really can't even tell that it's there. It's kind of see-through, so it's okay. And so I'm going to put the other half of that Velcro dot on the stocking and the bear. That's what's going to go in there, but I don't want to do it too soon. My last little tip for the beard, as you can tell, this is completely adorable, but I always like to give options. So another option, if you want a furry little gnome, is to go to your craft store and get some of this fake fur. You can get it in white, um, kind of this, this is an old kind of brown gray lots of different colors and so just cut it out and i haven't adhered that some tips when you're cutting this again you're going to want the side that's going to the top going to the back of the fabric and so i just traced it with a sharpie so that it would show up when you're cutting it you can tell there's this back piece and then the long hair so I just used my little sharp cutter bees. If you have the little Tim Holtz ones, those would be perfect. But instead of just cutting, I'm gonna show better. Instead of just going like this and cutting, if you do that, you're gonna be cutting the fur at different lengths and stuff. What I found worked best were these little scissors, just kind of putting them in there 
and you can fill it just get in between there where you're just on the backing you're not in the fur and cut it out that way so I have my little piece cut out and you're gonna notice that he's gonna have to have a haircut but I'm just gonna apply it the same way with my Tombow mono and trim up the bottom down here so he's not quite so long but I just think that's adorable and just one more cute option that you could do on your gnome. So I hope you enjoyed a look at this and creating this gnome with me. Um, be sure to let Rochelle know if you love this project and if you wanna see more of these um, different icons that can go in with the word home. I'm gonna show you some shots here of my finished project. And I think he just turned out adorable. So thanks so much for following along with me. Have fun creating for your home and the holidays.